What's going on everybody? I am coming at you today because I am selling my 2000 Jeep Wrangler. It has been an awesome vehicle for me, but it is just time to part ways. No, my uh, my family's expanding. We just had a daughter and um, you know, as we kind of prepare to do more family adventures, we are kind of just need a little bit something different other than a, a little two-door Wrangler. Um, but it's been awesome. This two-door Wrangler has been amazing. It's been everywhere I needed it to go in Arizona. Um, and so hopefully we can find out a new home. Let's hop in, walk around it, talk a, bit, a little bit about everything on it, and then, uh, yeah, maybe it'll be something somebody out there is interested in. Before we talk about anything else, let's hop right into the engine and everything else. So this is a uh, four liter uh, straight six, one of the more common engines in this era of Jeep. Uh, as most people know, it's a pretty proven engine. Very torquey, very reliable. Um, these things will last forever, pretty much. They'll outlast everything else bolted to it for the most part. They can be rebuilt and all that good stuff. This specific engine has 79,000 miles on it. So a 20 year old vehicle with under 100,000. Uh, when I bought it in 2017, it had just over 55, 59 I want to say. Um, so um, not too many more miles than I put onto it. It was owned by a elderly couple I believe was the first owner. They, they had it up in their cabin up north. Um, then another gentleman bought it from them and then I bought it from that gentleman. So you would be the fourth owner I believe. Um, this is the Patriot Blue, Patriot Pearl Blue color I believe. Um, Oh, and it transmission-wise, it is a uh, automatic. Alrighty, so still let's just start at the front of the vehicle and work our way back. So up front here, we've got a custom-built bumper that's basically the factory bumper in the rear, and then kind of welded on a bunch of cool stuff to the front of it. So uh, a little fun project there that was, and it's it's held up great, super dur durable. The whole front of it's quarter-inch steel, uh, really really thick beefy D-rings or D-ring shackle mounts on the front. Uh, and then these are actually, the, the Stinger here has been a, those were actually JK rock sliders, so it's been kind of repurposed for a little medium Stinger. The idea behind that Stinger was so that it wasn't too tall. So as you can kind of see, I wanted it to be just barely visible from the driver. I didn't want it sticking way up here and having it be which overly visible. So it's it's barely just sticking up so you can kind of see it. That way as you're approaching something, you can kind of see exactly where you're very tippy tippy point of the jeep will be uh, so you don't hit something or you kind of know where you're going to be at um let's see headlights these are just decently cheap amazon headlights that have a uh, daytime running light halo uh, and that halo also flashes amber when you put your blinker on uh, cheap install but it's been they've been awesome them that was one of the first mods I actually did to the jeep and it's been holding up this whole time um, let's see, little zombie light flashers, these are just cool to flip on and have flashing on the trail during the daytime that people can see you. Alright, let's talk about suspension. So suspension wise, we are sitting on 3 inch springs, these are actually TerraFlex springs. Um, then we've got uh, Bilstein 5100 shocks. Um, Rubicon Express uh, sway arm, sway bar disconnects, those are greasable so they're going to last a very long time. Um, down here we've got down here we've got a poison spider steering box skid plates. We have um, cav fab. Let's see if we can get the camera to adjust. What the? There we go. Down here we've got cav fab um, HD high clearance steering, whatever you want to call it. Uh, really good steering kit. This is actually uh, got heim joints on the end of it there. So the heim joints you just kind of lubricate with silicone spray every other fill up basically you just kind of spray them as needed uh, they've been great um, and then also underneath here up high this bar here this is a um, I believe it's rough country it's their um, oh what's it called it's a rough country it's a rough country steering box brace just kind of reinforces um, the steering box here that way as you put more twists on the bigger tires it can uh, take the abuse. Let's see, we've got down here EAG um, rock sliders, real beefy sliders, those have been awesome. We have got some uh, light pods here on the A-pillar, 50 inch light bar, poison spider hood louver. Got a custom graphic uh, tarantula. It's kind of been the theme of this Jeep was a tarantula because we're in Arizona. You're always always crawling everywhere, and uh, I had a friend of mine actually design that for me, and it's been pretty awesome. Coming around the top, we've actually got the top flipped up right now. That is the um, best top 
Trek Top NX, I believe it's called, in the premium black twill. So this is a very, very high-end um, fabric. It's been amazing. It's not that, it, this is not like any other soft top I've seen. It's definitely not like the factory TJ soft tops. This thing has been holding up great. It's awesome. It's only about less than a year old. I've only had it on there for. Um, came with new door surrounds and everything else. So it's just a fantastic kit. As far as tires go, we are on 33-inch BFG all-terrains on some kind of 15-inch uh, alloy. It's um, been a good setup. I got these used, and they've been holding up well for having about a year, I'd want to say, a little, maybe a little over a year. Uh, tread life, uh, as far as they go, I'd say I haven't measured them, but it looks like a little bit over half, half their life. Still plenty to give because they are an all-terrain, the last usually typically a little longer than a mud terrain. All right, around the rear, we've got a Smitty Built XRC um, rear bumper and tire carrier. This thing is solid. Let me tell you, that is super heavy, super strong. It's been holding up well. On the rear as well, you can't see right now, but there is a ring that is behind the spare tire, a little third brake light ring. So that way when you hit the brake pedal, that'll flash red. And then four foot fire stick CB antenna there. Alrighty, taking a look inside the Jeep, you can see we've got a main feature here is kind of the um, bolt-on sport cage, sure, roll cage, whatever it really is. Uh, it is a bolt-on kit, as you can see here. It just everything bolts onto this existing. This is this is the factory bracing here. Um, so it bolts on and it, and it kind of reinforces all the factory stuff. It's been really nice. It's got this kind of dash bar up here, if you can kind of see, um, that you can bolt accessories to. You can get all kinds of roll cage style mounts for mounting phones. I had a 67 Designs mount up there that was rock solid. Uh, and then it extends throughout the back here. So the sport cage extends throughout the back here, the bolt-on cage. It's even got a rear bar that goes from passenger driver's side of the Jeep. And that's where I've been attaching some uh, speaker pods that we'll get into there in a second. Um, seats, we have Corbo Baja RS seats. They are reclinable and they do have the Corbo bracketry at the bottom. All right, so right here we've got our switch system for all of our accessories. Um, this is a custom built switch system I made that ties into a relay box in the engine compartment there underneath the brake booster. Uh, everything's all wired, fused up, all the relays are in there. It's all solid stuff. So here, kind of start on the left, that left farthermost switch, that is for our um, pod lights, the two on each pillar. Then you got the 50 inch light bar. The third one over is, um, there's actually little LED pucks inside the hood that you can turn on to work on at night if you're in the middle of the trail doing a repair or something. You can have little lights in there. Fourth one is those zombie flashing lights. And then the second, next two are blank. Those are ready to be tapped into in the relay box. You just hook up your hot and ground and your next accessory is ready to go. The seventh one there, as you can see, that is a little horn that is actually um, a momentary switch that is attached to a Ugo horn from Harbor Freight. Best, most fun $8 I've ever spent. That has been a lot of fun to just honk at your friends. And then the very last switch is uh, going to the air compressors, which is actually on a separate 80 amp relay that is uh, back there. And that powers both air compressors, which we'll show you in a second. Moving up, we got a Pioneer Bluetooth head unit that is uh, powering the sound. That thing's been awesome. And we also got a Cobra Bluetooth, or we also have a Cobra CB radio in here and a Astatic mic, whatever, very popular mic that's been really reliable. All right, so moving along to the rear of the vehicle, we have the um, Tuffy storage box system here. This will slip up and give you all kinds of storage underneath. And then there's a great tray on top for adding all kinds of stuff. I strapped coolers to this and whatnot. You just put a ratchet strap around to the whole tray and bolts up on. You could easily put little ring mounts on it to just quickly kind of attach stuff. Been great when I took the, took the sides off, you can bolt stuff on or strap stuff down to it so nothing falls out. All right, big thing back here is going to be the air compressor setup. So we've got um, two air compressors. One is a Vi Air um, air compressor on the left. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what model it is on the top of my head, um, but it is a continuous um, air compressor, so it doesn't have a duty cycle. Um, and then the Smitty Built here on the right, this is the Smitty Built. It's the higher end one, the 5.5 
CFMs, whatever. Those are tapped together. Those um, are both plumbed into this air tank over here. Two and a half gallon tank. It fills those up in, I want to say about a minute and a half, two minutes. It fills that, both those compressors fill the tank. Then all the air in that tank is what supplies um, air to the tires with for the um, four tire air inflation slash de-inflation system. Uh, we'll talk about that next. Um, but before that, we've got underneath here storage. You see all kind of around tool bags. Um, and then a subwoofer, a little dual truck subwoofer I got from Walmart. It actually puts out some pretty darn good sound for the 75 bucks I spent on it. All right, let's talk about airing up and airing down and kind of the air system we got here. So the two left air hoses come from the two tanks and route along uh, to the, uh, there's an air manifold underneath here and then up into the tank. Once that fills up, um, there's a lead going to this pneumatic switch here, which is switched by the little switch there on this plate with the gauge. So that switch opens and closes, opens and closes a valve here that valve it goes underneath the Jeep and it's actually plumbed out to all four tires. And then at each of the four tires, we have a we have a quick little air disconnect right there that you'd find in a shop. This one's actually cool. You don't have to pull, you don't have to pull the collar down at all. You just pop the fitting right in there. Found these at Harbor Freight. They've been awesome. Um, and then you have I have a little lead that will come with the Jeep that goes from the tire to the little air hookup. So these are those leads that go from the tire to the uh, air hookup. Each one's like f four feet long, I want to say. So that end pops right in there. You just push it in. No need to pull back the collar. Pop it right in. And then this end is a little quick disconnect for a valve stem. You just slip it right on over your valve stem. And then to disconnect it, you pull the collar back, pull it out, and then you're good to go. The beauty of this system is the reason I built it is because I was tired of carrying on a gigantic air hose, having it wrapped around, stored to the back. Now you just have these four little hoses, takes up no space at all in a bag, really convenient. And you can air up all four tires at once. You don't have to go sitting around at every single tire for a minute and a half, or whatever. You just, just you connect all four, hop in your Jeep, flip the switch, and sit there in the air conditioning until your gauge reaches, reads the, um, the right PSI. So pretty cool in my opinion. Um, there's other systems out there in the market that are pretty costly, and I just thought, well, I could do this myself. It's pretty simple. The second beauty to this is you can use it as an air down system. So right there on the other end of that valve, on the other end of that solenoid valve, air, whatever you want to call it, there is a quick connect, uh, another air coupler, and you just disconnect that, and then when, then when you turn on the switch, air will flow out of the tires. So right now it's connected. That means we'd be in air up mode. So as the compressors are on, air would be flowing into the tires, down to the Jeep and into the tires. If I disconnect that and the valve is open, the air is flowing out from that valve. And that's how you air down. You air down inside your vehicle. All right, so that is the very quick and crude rundown of, um, of the Wrangler and what I've done to it. And um, yeah, really, it's just, this is a great vehicle for anywhere you want to go. Uh, it's been through the Terminator Trail in Arizona, we went to Pyatt Draw, all the other easy trails like Four Peaks and um, uh, Box Canyon down in Florence. Um, it's, it's been a great Jeep and uh, it's going to be kind of sad to see it go. Um, it's been a um, pretty amazing Jeep, but uh, it's, it's time to find a new home so I can start my next adventure with, with our daughter and my wife and um, doing some different things. So please look down in the description for a link to this. I'm going to have it posted on OfferUp and probably Facebook Marketplace. Uh, you can find it there and definitely send me a message on one of those two platforms for, uh, and for more information on it. I'm sure I've missed a few things in this video, uh, but I'll definitely have a lot more uh, description in the, um, uh, on the OfferUp and Facebook page so you can see more uh, of all the details of what's going on with it. So um, thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate your time and I'll catch you later.